Hello, hello, hello. Jordan uh, with the Young Turks, TYT Politics. Tommy Tahipi Bayless uh, driving. Uh, I'm not driving, he's driving. Tell the audience how you feel about them. How I feel about what? The audience. Oh, I feel good. I love y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What am I telling the audience? So, uh, oh, I'll spy right there, dog. Yeah, yeah. You want to um, come right back? No. And then it'll sound better? So, we're on the Great American Road Trip here uh, on our way to Flint, Michigan. And sometimes in life, when you do the right thing, Ty, Yes. When you show up, uh -huh. and when you keep showing up, yes. Sometimes shit happens right at the right time. Praise the Lord. And Hallelujah. I would say, thank you, Jesus Christ, and four different God. Continuing, continuing to come back to Flint. We are now about what do we got? An we got hour and a half from Flint, so Michigan. Something like that. We're about an hour and a half from Flint, Michigan, and news has come out that does not look. So terrific mm. for Michigan Governor Rick Snyder. Talk that shit. Michigan Governor Rick Snyder, who was presiding uh, the entire time of the Flint water Half crisis, mile, which, as Avenue. I've been telling you for quite some time, turn on to East Avenue. We're gonna, we, we got the directions on, so we're going to just turn it. Yes. So Michigan Governor Rick Snyder, who has been presiding over, uh, presided over Michigan during the water crisis, all along, he said, oh, no, I didn't know anything about the water issues. I didn't know anything until 2016. Uh, I said, yeah, I don't buy that. I think there was a lot of uh, signals and red flags that indicated he did know. Well, today in court, uh, human health and human, um, what was his name? Human Health and Human Services Director Nick Lyon is the first government official being charged uh, in this Flint water crisis. Uh, so his his hearing was today, one of his hearings, and a government official uh, contradicted Governor Snyder's story of first learning about the water crisis in 2016. This is very, very big news. This is the first open and public uh, claim that the governor of Michigan lied about when he knew about the Flint water crisis. I'm going to read to you from the Detroit water crisis. Uh, Detroit Free Press. Apologies for the, the bumpy uh, camera, but we're, we're on the... We're about to park in a minute. So yeah, we're about to park. So, from the Detroit Free Press, Governor Rick Snyder knew about Flint area outbreaks of Legionnaire's disease in December 2015, a month before he said he found out, according to court testimony today. The bombshell information was revealed by Harvey Hollins III, Snyder's point man for the state's response to the Flint water crisis. Hollins testified during the preliminary examination of Michigan Department of Health and Human Services Director Nick Lyon, the highest ranking government official charged in connection with the Flint water crisis. He said he told Snyder about the outbreaks during a phone call in December 2015, which contradicts what Snyder has said previously that he first learned of instances of Legionnaire's disease in January 2016. Let me make it clear. Governor Snyder said this in front of Congress, under oath. Governor Rick Snyder said this in front of a congressional panel, under oath. So you better share that video right now. Share it now to the high heavens. Share this video and make sure uh, your friends, your family know, because this is the one example. I don't know if he's going to get convicted because we do live in the United Corporations of America, but there is now at least a claim from a government official that the governor of Michigan, I'm not driving, I'm in the passenger seat, thank you, that the governor of Michigan uh, knew about the Legionnaires outbreak, which was connected to the Flint water crisis, which people died from uh, in December of 2015, not January of 2016. Why this is important is reason would stand if the governor said he didn't find out to 2016. And we now have someone saying, a government official saying he knew in, 20, in December of 2016. Well, how do we know he didn't know before? December 2015, right? We're talking about a month's difference, but if he lied about and said I knew about it in January 2016, well, maybe this individual, again, his name was Harvey Hollins, 
uh, the po- his point man for the state's response to the Flint water crisis, Hollins said to, said it to him on the phone in December of 2015. Snyder claims he didn't know about it until January 2016. Snyder already lied once. How do we know that he wasn't told about it before December 2015? Let me read you a little bit more. He said he told Snyder about the outbreaks during a phone call in 2015, which contradicts what Snyder has said previously that he first learned of Legionnaire's disease in January 2016. Quote, as soon as I became aware of it, we held a press conference the next day. Snyder said in an interview played in court today. The news conference was held January 13, 2016. Howens testified he and Richard Baird, a top aide to Snyder on Flint, By the way, Richard Baird, his title is transformation manager, whatever that means. Uh, Hollins Hollins testified he and Rich Baird, a top aide to Snyder on Flint, met with the members of the Flint Water Advisory Task Force in late December, shortly before Christmas in 2015, about a report they were working on dealing with the water crisis. After the meeting, Hollins said he called the governor and asked if he was aware of the Legionnaires outbreak. He was not aware of that, Hollins testified, Snyder replied. The exact date of the phone call wasn't given. A spokesperson for Snyder's office declined to comment, declined to comment on the contradiction. Translated for the audience, they're busy on the phone with their lawyers. Rick Snyder is busy on the phone with his army of lawyers. And by the way, if you follow my reporting, guess who pays for his lawyers? the citizens of Flint, Michigan, and the rest of Michigan, the taxpayers, of course. We don't comment on the investigation or the judicial proceedings, Anna Heaton said in an email to the Free Press. Howland says he doesn't remember talking to Snyder about it face-to-face. Shortly after that, testimony abruptly ended for the day. The testimony came during the fourth uh, fourth day of Lyons' preliminary examination. Lyons faces felony charges of involuntary manslaughter and misconduct in office in connection with Michigan Attorney General Bill Schuette's investigation into the Flint water crisis. That's going to be important. I'm going to get to Schuette in a minute. At issue in the case is an unprecedented outbreak of Legionnaire's disease in the Flint area that the public was never told about until about a year after several top-ranking state health officials found out about it. And again, Legionnaires was direct, directly connected to the Flint water switch, switching from the Detroit water system to the toxic Flint River. The disease, which is a severe type of pneumonia and started after Flint changed its water supply source to the Flint River in April 2014, is linked to the deaths of at least a dozen people in 2014 and 2015. Lyon is accused of causing the death of an 85-year-old man who died in December 2015, six months after he tested positive for Legionnaire's disease. Schutte alleges that Lyon failed to alert the public about the outbreak when he knew that another outbreak was foreseeable and misled and withheld information on the outbreak from Snyder. So, if you're coming to this late, let me repeat. Governor Rick Snyder knew about Flint area outbreaks of Legionnaire's disease in December 2015, a month before he said he found out, according to court's testimony. The bombshell information was revealed by Harvey Hollins, Snyder's point man for the state's response to the Flint water crisis. Hollins testified during the preliminary examination of Michigan Department of Health and Human Services Director Nick Lyon. He said he told Snyder about the outbreaks during a phone call in December 2015, which contradicts what Snyder had said previously that he first learned of instances of Legionnaire's disease in January 2016. Now, as I just showed you covering the St. Louis protests, as I just was in East Chicago, Indiana, right before uh, doing this video, and now I'm headed back to Flint. uh, It's just coincidence and dumb luck. I'm headed back to Flint when this news comes out. Governor uh, Rick Snyder said this in front of Congress. So right there under oath, he perjured himself. Number two, the attorney general of Michigan is a man by the name of Bill Schuette. Bill Schuette is a Republican. Bill Schuette is running for governor of Michigan. Rick Snyder is term limited. So Bill Schuette, who is overseeing the 
investigation into the Flint water crisis, who is a Republican. So he doesn't want to charge Rick Snyder because there goes his money. There goes those Republican donors if he charges Rick Snyder. Well, what's Bill Schuette going to do right now? He is the attorney general, even though he's running, declared and running for governor. He is the favorite right now for the governor's race. However, he is the attorney general, and he is overseeing the independent investigation, which by my count has upwards of 10 attorneys on an independent, uh, you know, like this Russia investigation. They have an independent investigation. Uh, in, in charge is attorney Todd Flood. So they have been uh, working on this case now for about a year and a half, two years, uh, this group of 10 lawyers. And Schuette is in charge of the investigation. So Schuette, first of all, that's a conflict of interest. How can he be in charge of an investigation where Schuette said himself uh, a couple months ago after the latest charges were announced, uh, we, have not, we, have, we have not necessarily charged our final person. So that would mean Governor Snyder still technically can be charged. Well, do we really trust that the Attorney General of Michigan, Bill Schuette, a Republican, who, from what I hear from dozens of sources I've interviewed and talked to, isn't exactly a profile in courage, is a big supporter of our President Trump, his Muslim ban, among other things, how is it that we could rely on the Attorney General to fairly or be ethical and prosecute the governor, that if he, pro if he prosecutes the governor, that's going to hurt his political chances to become governor. His money's going to dry up. And a lot of the state of Michigan is Republican. They might not like that. So that's a blatant conflict of interest. But right here, a the head of the Flint state response, Harvey Hollins, the highest ranking government official charged in connection with the Flint water crisis, has said that he had a phone call with the governor and the governor knew about the water crisis at least, keyword at least, a month before he says he knew. And by the way, folks, that does not mean he didn't know about it earlier than that. That does not mean he didn't know about it earlier than that. That just means from what we know now, he knew about it a month before he says he did. And again, he said this in front of a congressional panel. That is perjury. That is perjury. If this were me, I'd be in jail five minutes ago. And I want to point out something else, because you might not let this sink in. The governor of Michigan has spent upwards of, tw of $6 million of your taxpayer money. If you live in Michigan, if you live in Flint, you have been paying... For his army of criminal defense attorneys. For his potential criminal charges. So why I have continually gone back to Flint, why I'm going back now, is Flint is ground zero for the privatization efforts gone, turned into a catastrophe. And if you take the camera off of Flint, if you take the attention off of Flint, it sets the playbook for every other contaminated place. It sets the playbook for all other government officials that poison their citizens from Flint to East Chicago to North Carolina to Pittsburgh to Milwaukee to Cleveland to Florida. Without accountability, other government officials are going to continue to recklessly and in a greedy, greedy fashion, cut corners to try and privatize everything from the post office to the water supply. And we've seen what happens when you try to privatize the water supply. Remember Flint? They only switched to the Flint River because they were building a privatized water pipeline called the Karagandi Water Authority. That the government coined a public authority, but it was a privatized water system. Look it up. But the bottom line is, I left his number in the headline. You might not get him now. It's uh, 541 Eastern Time. That's Bill Schuette, the Attorney General's office number. I ain't telling you what to do. I'm just giving you the information, folks. 
Is there ever going to be any accountability in America? I'm going back to Flint. This is going to be my ninth time. I'm going to be back there this weekend. Tonight, actually. How many people have I spoken to whose lives have been ruined? How many people have permanent health problems? I'm not going to get into their names. I just talked to a a couple that split up. A married couple with kids that split up because their marriage has been put through the ringer because of the health problems and all the stress and all the anguish. If we don't get accountability, if we allow uh, government officials like Rick Snyder, who I've been telling you for a year and a half now, is guilty as all hell. If we allow them to get away with this, then it's going to keep happening, whether it's Obama as president, Trump as president. Remember, this happened under Obama, folks. He came down here. He took a photo op picture drinking from a filtered glass of water. And everybody, all the media went away. Where's Rachel Maddow now? Huh? She covered this in the beginning. Credit to her. She hasn't covered it since. I think I saw her do one interview for four minutes. Vicky Marks watching now. A nice, uh, a nice resident has, has uh, Parkinson's now. Sorry, I hope you don't mind me revealing that, Vicky. Has Parkinson's following the water, the water switch. Has high, high lead levels in her home. In my view, has been railroaded by the Flint media, which I'm going to get to this weekend. But let me make something very clear, folks. Some people say, oh, Jordan, why do you keep going back to Flint? Why do you keep covering this? It's not just about Flint. It's about where you live. Because water contamination, it could be coming to you. And it might not be water contamination. But when people, when governments try to privatize things, when government tries to cut corners at the expense of poor people, because there's a lot of white poor people in Flint. It's not just a, a black thing. It's not just a Latino thing. It's a class thing. It's a poverty thing. When the government says, oh, these are just poor white, black, whites and blacks. We'll just switch the water. Who cares? We don't need to add it. We don't have to add anti-corrosion to the water. That will cost more. What happens is people die and people get sick and you have record numbers of miscarriages which a report just came out that Flint's um, infant mortality rate is the high, one of the highest in the whole entire country. So Governor Snyder has some explaining to do. I know you're going to see this all over CNN, right? I know you're going to see this all over the New York Times. Breaking, breaking, breaking. Maybe we need to, maybe we need to find some connection to Russia. Connect that Snyder lied and he was instructed to lie by Putin. Then they'll be all over it. Or he was selling water to Russia. Yeah. I think that's how we'll get him on this. But folks, Ty and I are getting there tonight. We will probably be live for the first time tomorrow morning. We're going to be here Saturday, uh, most of Sunday, and depending on uh, as news develops, maybe a little longer, we are still monitoring St. Louis, we actually will have a independent journalist named Revolutionary Z. That's RebZ.TV. RebZ.TV. He will be doing a guest reporting uh, appearance tonight. He'll be live streaming from a protest in Ferguson, Missouri, live on TYT Politics. So check him out. Uh, we're going to start. Uh, I can't be there right now because I'm only one person and I, I had committed to coming to Flint. So. We're going to have uh, Reb Z, Revolutionary Z is his name. Uh, Reb Z dot TV. He will be live uh, on TYT Politics tonight from uh, the protest in Ferguson. That protest is a continuation of the St. Louis protests uh, after the acquittal of another white police officer who murdered a black, a young uh, black man, Anthony Lamar Smith. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.